Oh no, oh no, oh no, my boss just called me and told me that if I don't work overtime tomorrow I'm going to be fired and I have a school assignment that's going to need to be done today and and my to house totally needs to be cleaned. Oh no, I need a way to fix this, I need to sleep less. Does that sound familiar? Have you ever been in a situation where you need more time really now, you know, preferably yesterday? Well, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can apply polyphasic sleeping to your situation. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So can polyphasic sleep be used to sleep less in emergencies? Well, it depends on how you look at it. First, let me link you to a video where we talk about how much you can alter your polyphasic schedule from an already adapted schedule if an emergency comes up. Uh, a link to it will be in the description. As that's going to be useful for people who are already adapted to a polyphasic schedule and suddenly need more time, you know, really immediately. Um, this video on the other hand is going to be targeted towards people who are monophasic or sleep in a single block during the night and need more time because of some unexpected unfortunate event. So whether you can use polyphasic sleep or not depends entirely on the type of emergency. As I talked about in the adaptation stages video, your first stage, which lasts approximately one week, is going to be really painless. You can use this in order to go up to a high alert mode, stress mode, uh, and sleep less while adding naps during the day that reduce your sleepiness. Okay, though, compared to an adapted polyphasic schedule, shortening your core in an emergency is going to be way more tricky. Because you're most likely not going to be able to fall asleep for the naps. Um, instead, what you're backing on here is the stress measure produced by your body as well as getting non-REM1 or NREM1 in your naps, which is a type of light sleep. Um, which doesn't really increase your objective sleepiness, but only subjective. Um, or in other words, it makes you think that you're more alert while you're actually performing as poorly as people who are not you know, sleeping or haven't taken a nap, haven't reached that non-REM1 state. So you think that you're awake, but you're really not awake. And that might sound pretty bad, but how does this matter compare to pulling an all-nighter? Well, when you're not sleeping at all, your homeostatic pressure or the sleep drive that makes you sleepy is going to skyrocket and you're going to feel extremely bad really fast. By sleeping some, especially more frequently than once a day, uh, this pressure is not going to build as fast and you're going to be able to make use of this for a longer amount of time. So that's pretty great. Um, for example, it's really hard to pull several all-nighters in a row, but when you're on an Uberman schedule with only two hours of total sleep at, at a time, you can easily go for a couple of weeks without crashing. You know, it's, it's really crazy, the ability that polyphasic sleep grants you. But we'll talk about that more later in this video. Another negative to this method than just relying on non-REM1 is that if you don't plan to stay on your polyphasic schedule and only shorten your sleep for a short time frame, um, you're going to need a massive amount of recovery to get back to your monophasic sleep needs, you know, to perform as well as you did when monophasic. A lot of that is going to need to be regained. Because of that, this method of hopping between polyphasic and monophasic sleeping should only be done in particular instances. Uh, like you need to finish a lot of work before a vacation and are then able to catch up on the lost sleep or something similar. But you can also use this time to start an actual polyphasic schedule, okay? With the goal of staying on the polyphasic schedule for a very long time. Um, in this case you should Schedule your adaptation so that the third stage, uh, which roughly occurs in the third week of adaptation, um, doesn't inf interfere with some high alertness requiring tasks. Uh, this should hopefully not be an issue because you're going to get a lot of work done before the third adaptation stage because of the extra time gained. Um, 
so l like in the first and second adaptation stages it's, it's going to be much better then. Um, if your goal is to be polyphasic for a very long time, you should definitely hear what we have to say about the different schedules so that you choose one that fits your needs from the beginning and you don't want to completely abandon your schedule progress after a few weeks when you find out that your schedule isn't compatible with your sleep needs or your type of person. Um, so we've made a whole playlist on the different polyphasic schedules that I suggest you check out. The link to it will be in the description. But okay, let's go back to the temporary switch. You've decided that you don't want to be polyphasic long term and only want the short term benefits of having more time. In this case, you, there are some schedules that work better than others. Because the nap only schedules reduce your sleep time by so much, they are actually going to make your first adaptation stage shorter. And you should thus probably avoid them, except you know, in extremely dire situations. Um, the time gained is immense, yes, but you're not going to be able to make use of that time for as long as you would on other schedules. So, you know, it takes quite a bit of math, but some schedules might actually grant you more time because you're able to utilize them longer than nap-only schedules. My recommendation is that you stick to schedules with around four hours of total sleep, like Everyman Tree, Dual Core Tree, or Bime Action. Uh, but that has a chance of you waking up during slow wave sleep for the nap, so it's possible that, that it's not that good of a schedule. But, but every man tree and dual core tree, those are your best bets if you need a lot of time. Higher total sleep time need people, you know, people who need a lot more sleep, who sleep maybe 10 hours when monophasic, 9 hours, you know, above what normal people sleep. Those people should probably suffice with going to, you know, every man to dual core two, dual core one, some, some schedule like that, you know, don't reduce your total sleep time too much because that's again going to shorten the duration that you spend in stage one and stage two. Okay. Avoid that. So assess what your sleep needs are and then pick a schedule that reduces them by, you know, maybe four hours if you need a lot of time. So now you have a gist of which schedules to use and when to use them. And I'll quickly tell you well, you shouldn't use this method, okay. You shouldn't use this if you need more time in order to study for a test. See, slow wave sleep and REM sleep are vital for memory consolidation. And if you choose to shorten your sleep before taking a test, uh, you're not going to be able to remember anything. So it's not a good situation to be in if you've been cramming, you know, information for a whole week and then the test arises, bam, you don't remember anything. You don't want to do that. Instead, you want to plan out the time and build up more slowly. It's, in most cases, even better to not study for a test and just sleep a whole night instead of cramming all that information in and doing an all-nighter, you know. It's, it's really crazy, actually, when you, when you hear it like this, but that's the unfortunate truth here. Uh, anyways, I hope you understood something from this video. I hope that you help that I helped you in some way. Okay, please share if you have had to make use of a polyphasic schedule when you desperately need time. Okay, were you able to fall asleep for the naps, or did you just push through with pure willpower alone? Please subscribe if you don't want to miss out when we release more videos about polyphasic sleeping and. I'll be seeing you later. Nap well, people!